Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this Alveflow webinar today on automated fluid sequential injection. I'm Marine Dayef, and I'm a microfluidics research engineer. My colleague, Robin Oliveres, is a technical sales specialist, and he will join us at the end of the presentation for the Q&A session. Before starting the presentation, a brief introduction about Alveflow. Alveflow is a company whose goal is to develop state-of-the-art microfluidic instruments for researchers and engineers. We are scientists ourselves, and we aim to make microfluidics more accessible to specialists and non-specialist end users. Scientists from all disciplines that benefit from flow control can then advance the state-of-the-art in their field. With Alveflow's instrumentation, we help stimulate scientific and technical discoveries and participate to great breakthroughs in fields where microfluidics is required. But for now, let me present a little bit more the company itself. Alveflow has been founded in 2011 in Paris, and we are now the world leader in microfluidics instrumentation. We have more than 2,000 systems on the field in 63 countries. We have collaborators in both industry and academics. For example, we have been working with companies like Sanofi, Total, or BioRad, and academic research groups from the MIT, Princeton University, and Stanford. In today's webinar, we will discuss the multiple fluid injection. At Alveflow, we have been developing a system for the sequential injection of fluids based on two centerpieces a pressure controller, and a rotary valve. But how is the multiple fluid injection system working? How many liquids is it possible to inject using this system? What parameters can be controlled? Is the full automation possible? Can this system be integrated to others? The aim of this presentation is to give answers to all these questions and give you some insights about the numerous possibilities that are opening up before you when working with this system. Considering the potential applications, you can think of all the ones where several liquids have to flow in a microfluidic device. For example, we can think of flow chemistry, drug screening, and dynamic cell culture, but there are many other possibilities and we'll describe some of them later. In this presentation, I will first present the working principle of pressure-driven flow control using a pressure controller, then the sequential injection itself and its advantages. At the end of this talk, I will present some applications for fluid sequential injection with a highlight on two European projects, Electromed and Pambayara. The research unit of Elvesis, the innovation unit, collaborates with researchers in the frame of these European projects to develop the sequential fluid injection for applications in personalized medicine. I will also give you some information about the industrial projects held at Helve Flu. Finally, with my colleague Robin Olivares, we will answer your questions. To begin with, let's have an overview of the main flow control systems currently used in microfluidics. They are syringe pump, gravitational system like rocking platform, peristaltic pump, and pressure controller. You may be already familiar with the syringe or peristaltic pump's working principle. But as a reminder, with the syringe pump, the liquid is pushed thanks to the mechanical movement of a plunger in the syringe. This method has the advantage to have good volumetric control, but due to the non-linearity of the mechanical movement of the plunger, this leads to a pulsatile flow and quite long response time. The peristaltic pump using, uses the mechanical action of a rotary element on a flexible tubing to push the liquid from the inlet to the outlet. But the main disadvantage with this technique is that it leads to an even more pulsatile flow than with syringe pump. That is why we developed a pressure controller, the Obi-Wan from Elveflow, and use pressure-driven flow control to monitor the fluids in our systems. This instrument and method allows higher stability, better response time. Moreover, it is simple to set up and operate and enables an easier system automation. Let me give you an insight on the working principle of this technique. You basically need a pressure controller and a reservoir. You need to connect your pressure controller to a higher pressure supply. 
The role of the pressure controller is to regulate and control the pressure in a stable and precise way at a target value. This controlled gas pressure is then used to pressurize a sealed reservoir where the liquid is stored. With increasing pressure, the liquid is pushed through the outlet tubing and flows through the fluidic system as shown on the video here. The greater the pressure, the faster the flow, meaning that the pressure difference between the inlet and outlet control the flow in the microfluidic device. The fluidic resistance of the overall system also plays a role in the relationship between pressure and flow. To give you a simple image to visualize it, it will be easier to push liquid through a large pipe with low fluidic resistance rather than in a really tiny one with high fluidic resistance. The controllers also have the ability to handle vacuum and actually you can work with pressure and vacuum on the same instrument to pull and push liquids. Of course, air is the most common gas used to pressurize, but you can also pressurize the reservoirs with other non-harmful gas if requested by your experiments. To control the flow rate rather than the pressure and carry out experiments with accurate flow control, it is required to combine the pressure controller with a flow sensor, either a thermal flow sensor, the MFS, for example, or a sensor working with the Coriolis force, the BFS. In this configuration, you have two different possibilities. The first option is to set a pressure at the inlet and use the sensor as the monitoring element to follow the fluid's flow rate in your system. The second option is to take advantage of a feedback loop between the pressure controller and the flow sensor. This loop enables the communication between both instruments. Everything is monitored through the ESI software from LVFlow, which allows the full automation of the process. The interface is user-friendly, you can indicate the targeted flow rate and the pressure controller will automatically adapt the delivered pressure to reach the value. Until now, I presented the working principle of the injection of a single liquid in a microfluidic system using pressure-driven flow control. Let's present now how we perform sequential injection using the same principle. In order to sequentially inject different liquids, we use the exact same setup, but add a rotary valve, the MUX distribution from Alvaflow, which works as a selector. We also had a manifold to pressurize several reservoirs using a unique channel pressure from the OB1. For now, let me present the MUX distribution, which is, as I just said before, a rotary valve used as a selector. The rotation of the valve allows to chew the liquid which goes through the fluidic system. The valve has a high flexibility. You can connect up to 12 liquids to the valve. This instrument is easy to set up and operate through the ESI software. On a more technical point of view, it's low internal volume, it's fast twitching time, and it's high chemical compatibility with wetted materials in PTFE and PCTFE, are so many advantages which make it possible to carry out varied exper experiments of great precision in various conditions. This animated video presents the working principle of the sequential injection. First, the reservoirs with the different liquids are pressurized with the pressure controller. Then, you select the liquid to inject with a rotary valve. Here, the blue solution is first injected through port 11 all the other ports being blocked. The solution flows in the flow sensor and in the microfluidic chip. To inject another solution, select another port. The valve rotates and another solution is injected. For example, port 12 is selected and the red solution is injected here. With the ESI software, it is possible to easily automate the overall injection. The parameters such as flow rate, position of the valve, and duration can then be programmed. Now that we understand the working principle of sequential fluid injection, let's have a closer look at the outcome of such injection in the microfluidic device. In this video, four different colored solutions are injected, one after the other. The yellow, the green, the red, and finally the blue. 
The LBFLOS system for sequential fluid injection brings together a number of advantages that I will recall here. Firstly, thanks to the rotary valve, it is possible to quickly swap your biological material chemical solutions. Secondly, in terms of flow control, you can either monitor the pressure or apply a target flow rate value and use a feedback loop with a flow sensor to have the pressure automatically adjusted to the targeted flow rates. Multiple parameters can be controlled, such as the duration of the injection, the volumes injected, to name a few. Moreover, different flow sensors are available in the LVFLOS product range, enabling the access to a wide range of flow rates from nanoliter per minute to milliliter per minute. Thirdly, in terms of flexibility with solutions, you can handle various volumes of liquids from microliter to liters as different sizes of reservoirs can be connected to the system. The sequential injection works with any liquids like oil, water, but also aggressive reagents. Different options for sample collection can be put in place to collect samples in one, two or more reservoirs. Fourthly, the overall system is really versatile in terms of automation, integration and scaling up. In the following presentation, I will give more details on the possibilities to work with various volumes and properties of working solutions, on the possibility to quickly swap fluids, on the collection of multiple samples, on the scaling up of the system, and finally, I will describe the options for automation and integration. The first aspect I would like to highlight here is the versatility of the system in terms of fluids. If your experiment requires the use of a buffer in large quantities, but also expensive reagents in tiny volumes, it is not an issue for our sequential fluid injection system. You can actually connect tanks with various volumes from bottle to open door. Moreover, there is no restriction concerning the use of liquids as the wetting materials of the system are resistant to aggressive reagents. The flow sensors can also be chosen to work with liquids of different properties. If we add to the setup a 3-2 microfluidic valve with three ports right before the device, so biological media or chemical solutions can be swapped even more quickly. The valve controller, the MUX wire from Alvaflow, controls the opening and closing of the path on the valve. You can choose to direct the microfluidic line to the collection tank connected to one part of the valve, the pink one on this schematic, to speed up the exchange. Once the next solution is close to the device, you can switch the valve again and direct the fluid to the chip. This configuration is also interesting in order to flush quickly air bubbles from the microfluidic line. Thanks to the flow sensor integrated to the setup, a precise volumetric control of the injected fluids is possible. Another aspect to point out is the possibility to collect multiple samples, for example, for emulsion stability study or nanoparticles generation. You can connect a second MUX distribution valve at the outlet of the chip and choose to direct the fluid to one collection tank or the other by selecting the outlet port with the ESI software. It might also be interesting, for example, if your experiment requires flushing. You can then collect the wasted solution from the rinsing steps in one of the 12 collection tanks. It is also possible to adapt the setup to parallelize microfluidic devices, to test the effect of drugs on different cell types, for example. To do so, you can add a manifold on the main microfluidic line after the rotary valve to split up the flow. On all the secondary lines, you can add two two valves, which are on and off valves, to allow the liquid to pass or not in each device. For some experiments and industrial purposes, scaling up may be the key point. With our system, we can connect MUX distribution valves in series and parallel and inject sequentially up to 150 solutions. To do so, several distribution valves are required. The outlets of the first stage of rotary valves are connected to the inlets of the MUX distribution present on the second stage. This option of scale up might be really interesting for all sorts of testing, such as drug screening, for example. 
In the light of these different examples, you can now better understand the flexibility of this system. Of course, I have only presented a few examples compared to the extent of the possibilities. If you have an idea for an, an experimental setup in mind, you can contact us and we will think together about the best way to realize it. Now let's present the automation and integration options of the sequential injection system. The first possibility to automate the system is to use the tool integrated in the ESI software. Through this sequencer, you can control the parameters of your experiments, select the solution to inject, and the duration of each step. If you are using other instruments, such as microscopes or temperature control systems, which are already controlled by your own code, you can be interested in the software development kits provided with ESI software. The libraries available in Python, LabVIEW, MATLAB, or C++ enables to control and help flows instruments with your own code. Last but not least, if you plan to integrate on microfluidic technology in your products, we can provide OEM versions and customize our system in order to adapt it to your requirements. We are always interested to fill the gap between academia and industry, and our ultimate goal is to bring our technology to the mainstream markets. Speaking of applications, let's review some examples where sequential fluid injection is of interest. Firstly, the sequential injection is interesting in applications related to flow chemistry, lab on a chip, and functionalization of sensors. For example, in the context of the European project Electromed, we are developing a system for multiplexed electrochemical PEP synthesis in order to functionalize sensors and enable protein screening for personalized medicine. Secondly, it is interesting in the calibration of sensors and biosensors to automatize and reduce the duration of the testing. The Innovation Unit develops a platform for this purpose in the frame of the European project from Biora, for example. Thirdly, if we combine microfluidic droplets and sequential injection, it might ease experiments in drug delivery, sensitivity tests, screening, microfluidic PCR, and gradient assay. Firstly, by combining cell biology and cell culture with sequential injection, you can think of experiments such as cell response to medium changes, live cell imaging, drug testing, 3D cell culture, and spatial uh, transcriptomics that could be improved and easily automated. We will review in more details the applications of flow chemistry and the calibration of sensors. Among all the potential applications, we chose to present these two in more details because the innovation unit from Elvisys is actively participating in European projects on this subject. It is in the context of this project that the innovation unit is developing the sequential injection system, actually. So the first European project I'm going to highlight is the Electromet project. The goal of this project is to develop a platform for high throughput peptidomics. There are two main challenges in the project the electrochemical peptide synthesis and the development of a label free immune sensing system. Both features will be combined during the project to perform all the tests on a single platform. As a result, in this project, we aim at developing programmable ice throughput multiplexed immunoassays and protein screening for personalized medicine. The technical breakthroughs for the innovation units are reflected in the PEPT synthesis with the development of the sequential injection fetcher to serve this purpose. The amino acids forming the peptides have to be injected sequentially in an automated way and avoiding cross-contamination to ensure sensitivity, reliability, precision, and short time to results. We also work on the scalability of the platform on its compatibility with aggressive reagents and make it user-friendly for the better accessibility. Indeed, uh, the platform developed in this project might be interesting in various fields like chemical industry, where the sequential injection could be used for flow and complex combinatorial chemistry. It might also be interesting in agri-food industry to detect allergens or toxins, and also in the defense fields to detect biological warfare agents. If this project interests you, you can have a look at the website to find more information on the research and discover the collaborators. 
The second project highlighted today is the project Pambayara. The goal of this project is to develop tools for the assessment of new materials for medical purposes. The challenge of the project is to develop a unique instrument that brings together multiple and multi-scale analysis. Eventually, the instrument will include cytotoxicity and genotoxicity tests with microscopic real-time monitoring, as well as computer simulations and multi-scale modeling. For the innovation unit, the technology breakthrough is grouped in the online calibration of sensors. The platform must be very sensitive, reliable, and precise. It must also be scalable and user-friendly to characterize rapidly and easily a high number of biomaterials. The goal with the general platform is to develop cost and time effective generalized and personalized testing and reduce the complications of post implantations. But this platform is not only of interest in medicine, it can be useful in all the fields where calibration of sensors is required. Conductivity, temperature, gas, and pH sensing, for example. If you want to learn more about this project and its collaborators, check out the project website for more information. Elveflow is also involved in industrial projects by providing instruments that meet precise specifications. Since 2018, we are also developing another aspect with manufacturers, which is OEM solutions and integration. For example, in the biotech fields, in order to scale up molecule testing assays for drug discovery, we provided custom OEM solution for multiple liquid sequential injection. We have the experience and capabilities to develop complex systems that meet our partners' requirements in a wide variety of fields. Feel free to contact us if you want to design your own setup. To conclude this webinar on automated fluid sequential injection, I would like to summarize the main characteristics of the system. Multiple solutions can be sequentially injected using a rotary valve, the MUX distribution, and up to 150 solutions can even be injected in a scaled version. The flow can be tuned to fulfill the requirements of the experiments. A complete automation of the system can be realized and customization of the setup with microfluidic valves, various tank reservoirs is possible. In summary, the take home message here is that the platform is highly versatile, can be used for numerous applications and just wait for you to test all its options. If you are interested in more details about automated fluid sequential injection, please check out our content on Elveflow's website at elveflow.com. We have lots of information available like application notes and pilot packs presenting applications where the sequential injection is of interest with detailed protocols and spanning various scientific fields from the cell culture to organ and chip and calibration of sensors. To help you perform sequential injection, we have product solutions like a sequential injection pack, which is a turnkey solution for the multiplexing fluid injection. Moreover, a user guide explaining in more detail the working principle of the sequential injection, describing several options for the setup and giving hints and tips to tailor it will be released in two weeks. You can also send us an email at contacts at elveflow.com with any questions. We are always happy to talk and discuss your microfluidic setup. We also invite you to check out the online microfluidic calculator it is a great resource to guide you through flow rates, pressures, and resistances to use in your microfluidic system. So thank you everyone for attending this webinar. And now together with Robin Oliveres, we will look forward to taking your questions. So hi everyone. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Um, so as, uh, as I mentioned in the chat, so if you have any questions, uh, you guys feel free to ask them and we'll be happy to help. Uh, um, Marine and I uh, will uh, try to, to, answer, to be as uh, thorough as possible on, on, on all of the questions you may have. So the, the first question from Louvre, uh, so, uh, there are two questions here actually. Uh, so the first one is, what is the switching time of the system? So uh, Marine, I guess you can answer to that because you've carried out uh, extensive tests on this aspect. So the switching time from uh, one port to the other, so two consecutive uh, ports, 
are, if I remember, it's 156 milliseconds. So it's, it's really fast. And of course, if you are jumping from one port to the other, which are not uh, uh, consecutive one another, uh, you will, it will take more time, but it's within a second. So it's really fast. Uh, second question from Nusu. Does it use a moving mechanism internally and what is the mechanism? So uh, maybe Marine, you can come back to the, to the initial uh, uh, slide introducing the system. Yeah. If you don't mind, so, so we clarify it for everyone. Yes. Yep. So, So it's far away. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Okay, this one, I think. There it is, yes, indeed. So, uh, so here in the schematic, uh, aside from the pressure control system and, and the, the reservoirs and the flow sensor, which are uh, for the basic, very basic uh, control fluid, uh, here there are two main elements that are added. One, which is a manifold. So this is a passive element that just passively splits the incoming pressure to the several reservoirs. And there is an active element, which is this MUX distribution valve. And so this MUX distribution valve indeed has a small motor that is basically turning, which is basically making it turn the, the, the a manifold inside of it automatically using the computer so as to be able to drive the fluid wherever you want it. Okay, so... So yeah, that, that's basically how it answers the questions. Um, so question from Amira. So uh, she's, uh, Amira is uh, using uh, various chemicals for, for her experiments. And uh, she was wondering if there is any liquid incompatibility with the system. Uh, so basically uh, in terms of uh, chemicals, there, there is no incompatibility. Um, what it works. What needs to be checked here, uh, excuse me, Marin, but what needs to be checked is the compatibility with the different elements of the circuits. So in the typical circuit like this, all the tubings are made of PTFE. The valve is made of PTFE and PCTFE as indicated here, and the flow sensor is made of glass. So the, all these are basically a very uh, chemically inert so there is no uh, you can basically use most of the liquids with these and definitely no problem in using any aqueous solutions or anything like this and perhaps something we can we can add here is that uh, there might be uh, something to check uh, in terms of flow sensor because mm -hmm. uh, for the some flow sensors you need to calibrate it uh, for some different uh, liquids and there is also the solution of the BFS, which works um, with, which doesn't require any uh, calibration. So it's just a matter of what kind of chemicals you're using to check with the flow sensors. Thanks, Marin, for the precision. And yes, she's totally right. The use of the BFS is extremely handy when uh, working with different types of fluids. Um, one question from Jorge. Uh, thanks for the presentation. I would like to know if the manifold is controlled by software or automatized. So as I said, as I mentioned just before, the manifold is a passive element. So you don't control it. It's just a, it just splits the gas flow. However, the distribution valve, so the rotary valve instead is computer controlled and can be fully automatized using a computer. All right. Uh, Marine also mentioned our uh, built-in automation tool, and this can be also used to uh, plan long-term experiments and have them running automatically. And um, another question, how to avoid contamination inside the fluid multiplexer, so inside the rotary valve? Uh, so yeah, perhaps I can answer to that. Um, so if, if you are uh, switching from one port to the other, so consecutive ports, uh, I mean, you, you will not have any cross-contamination because your two liquids will be uh, the, the, the consecutive. Uh, but if you're switching from one port to another, uh, which are not consecutive, you can, for example, use uh, the, the system that we presented. Um, uh, we'll just go back to that with the valve. Uh, so it's uh, this one uh, here. And you can use this valve and uh, just flush your solution coming out from uh, the MUX distribution in this uh, wasted reservoir, and you will avoid any cross-contamination. 
All right. Well, I guess that's that's totally in line with what I would have said. Also, another thing is uh, you can bring back the pressure to zero at the inlet of the system, so no liquid is pushed. You swap your valve, and uh, you bring it back in. The, the The response time will be slightly higher, but that's also a way to to decrease the cross contamination when switching from uh, between two non consecutive ports. Um, so a question from Amir. Uh, does the flow velocity remain stable? For example, I need a velocity of two meters per second. So four milliliter per minute in this chip and by changing the fluid, does the flow lost its pressure or remain stable? And by shocking the flow, my situation for trap trapment would change. So yes, indeed, whenever you switch the valve position, the valve would get blocked during 156 milliseconds, and so the flow rate will slightly change. Uh, Mar Marine has also carried out a couple of tests on, th on that, and I'll let her develop a bit more on, the, on this aspect. Yeah, so you, you will, of course, um, as uh, Robin said, uh, have uh, an unstable uh, flow, but it will last uh, really just a couple of uh, milliseconds. And if you want to uh, avoid that, uh, you can uh, use the same kind of setup that, that is uh, here with the valve. And uh, if, if you already have the flow going on, but to, to the, the, the pink reservoir, I will call it like that, uh, and you switch just the, the three two valve again uh, to direct the flow to the chip, you will have really less uh, perturbation in your flow rate. So that could be also um, an option in order to decrease uh, the impact of the rotation of the valve on the, on the flow rate. All right, thanks. Um, a question from Francesca. So is there anything to watch out when connecting multiple reservoirs with different dimensions to the same pressure channel? So uh, on this aspect, uh, there is, uh, yes, indeed, a couple of things to figure out. So, uh, what did you to make sure of uh, so there is no problem uh, working with different reservoir size at all uh, as has been mentioned by Marin before however the the thing is as you as you can guess you're pressurizing uh, the more reservoirs you add to your system the larger is the total volume you're gonna pressurize and therefore you have to be careful not to have a too large dead volume otherwise it might affect the response time of the system it's simply that, Obviously, as you can guess, pressurizing a 10 liter reservoir is much longer than a 15 ml one. And so, uh, and so that, that's the only aspect you, you, should, you should be careful with. Other than that, normally it shouldn't affect much uh, the, the outcome of your system. Um, so one question from Lamia. So I have a question about the micro control valve. If you could share any information with me, please. I actually need to let only 10 microliter of fluid uh, and the other quantity should flow to the waste. Uh, your proposition are highly appreciated. So um, on this aspect, Marin, do you have any insights? I guess I, I can answer, but if you have any. Yeah, so perhaps I can answer uh, first and you can complete. Um, the, the idea here would be perhaps to preload uh, your tubings uh, with the, the 10 microliter uh, of fluid that you need to have in the chip. And uh, either you need a buffer after that or solvent or, um, uh, and you can push this 10 microliter of liquid uh, to your chip and uh, go to the waste afterwards. Yep, exactly. Um, thanks, Amira. Can I, uh, uh, so a question from Amira, can I actually sequence, uh, can you do a sequence of gas and liquid in the system? So yes, indeed, that's a possibility that hasn't been mentioned here, but you can, instead of uh, hooking up a fluid, uh, fluid, a liquid path to the distribution valve, you can also directly hook up the outlet, for instance, of the pressure controller to the, in, to, to the rotary valve. And so you will inject gas inside the system. So that's also doable, but can be extremely handy. For instance, when doing a, cleaning of your system, usually the cleaning step involve uh, um, a, a water a solution, uh, then uh, ethanol, for instance, and then, and then a, a flush with air, and you can definitely automatize all this using this system. And yeah, and if, if I can just add something, perhaps for the, the, the previous question, um, I don't know exactly what is the experiment, but that's also something possible to push with air the 10 microliter of liquid in the chip and like this, you just have the volume uh, that, that you want in the chip and you don't waste any anything. 
Yes, indeed. And so one last question from Nuv. Uh, what are the maximum uh, positive and negative pressure limits? So uh, with this kind of system, you can work up to eight bar. And, uh, and in terms of negative pressure, you can uh, go down to minus one bar. So yes, there is also this possibility of working with this typical system in suction rather than by pulling the liquid. Um, one. Um, so Lamia, do you do do you this valve and max at the micro scale? I mean micro system, uh -huh, in order to make the microfluidic as autonomous device. Um, so well, all this system right now. So uh, let's let's be very clear on this aspect. Uh, the pressure control uh, or controllers are not at the micro scale, all right? It's the liquids that we're driving that are at the micro scale. Uh, the, the system we provide here, the typical size of a pressure control system, for instance, is roughly um, so 10 by 10 by, by 20 centimeters. So it's not micro scale. Uh, the chip can be micro scale, but the whole control system around and the flow sensors and the valve and all that are actually at uh, at a larger scale. What, what happens is that we, we actually see a rising trend in microfluidics in terms of, um, of um, valves that are directly mounted on chips, but you still remain with a quite large uh, system, especially when you include the manifold and all these that are required with it. Um, yes, and uh, I guess that's it. And that I hope this answers most of the questions. Marine, do you have anything else to add or are you all set? No, I'm all set. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot, everyone, for attending, and thanks for your questions. Uh, I hope you you enjoyed it. Have a good day. Bye.